All right, so I'm gonna do a quick tutorial today on how to do composites on the inside of molds using an inflated balloon. This is a little technique occasionally we have to use if we want a nice surface on, say, the outside or sometimes on the inside of a mold or a final part. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna start by just applying some regular Part all number two wax to the inside. Now it's probably a little unnecessary. The inside of the PVC is already pretty smooth, but we're gonna do just like one coat and buff it off just to be sure. So basically, just use a small amount. That's gonna be a little rough to get try and get it in here, but I'm just gonna have to do the best I can. It's not really that big a deal. But uh, you definitely don't want extra wax sitting in there because that will actually give you a rough surface instead of a smooth surface and you'll just have to pick it out of your final product and ends up taking you a whole bunch of extra time. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this all waxed up and then we'll go ahead and pour the epoxy and get started with this. All right, so it's been about five minutes, enough time to get the wax to dry but not get too dry so it's hard to buff off. Um, so now we just take a nice clean wag rag and buff off the inside of the wax here. Uh, so we don't want any excess in there. Basically just gives a nice film on the surface to prevent the epoxy from sticking. And it is a little bit more important with this part to not have the epoxy stick because in the end we're going to try and push the part out because we're laying it up on the inside. So just go ahead and get all this excess wax out of here. Oh, and I probably should say that you should probably wear gloves when doing this in case for whatever reason you're allergic to this. But uh, for the purpose of this video, I put on like some liquid gloves. So anyway, it's kind of hard to get this cleaned out inside here. Just to kind of scrub it out. And also, because we're using a balloon, inflated inside of this. We want to make sure there's no sharp edges. So all of the inside edges here have been beveled so that the balloon doesn't pop when it sticks out both ends. Uh, it's just kind of a little detail. Of course, every part's a little different and you gotta make accommodations. All right, so that'll do for that. It's good enough. So now, I already have the pieces cut. We are going to lay up two pieces of three ounce fiberglass here. Um, this piece is two inches longer than the actual final product. We're looking to make a five inch tube here, and this is seven inches long. Uh, and these pieces here are about six inches long. So we'll have a little bit of excess, which is good because you want to be able to cut that off at the end. You don't want the rough edges of the fiberglass or carbon fiber, whatever you use, to uh, be your, on your final product. You want to be able to cut those off. And then we're going to sandwich a piece of 64 inch balsa in between that. This has also been cut to size so that it fits uh, as near perfectly as possible inside so we don't have any gaps. Um, and the fiberglass will overlap about a quarter inch on itself when you fold it over. And that's just to make sure that, uh, well actually it was just because I was kind of lazy when I was cutting it, so that'll have to do. So now I'm going to show you how to mix the epoxy. This. So, alright, you take this and lightly at first, you just want to get the fabric completely wet with the epoxy. And again, you should be wearing gloves for this because there's actually quite a few people that are allergic to epoxy. You break out hives and all that good stuff. And uh, also the fiberglass. So, um, yeah, you should wear hands. Or, you should wear gloves. Uh, all right. So, this fiberglass is a little less sensitive than carbon fiber to uh, fiber shifts just because of the weave. So you don't have to worry quite so much about pressing kind of hard to get the excess epoxy out, but uh, your final product will weigh considerably less if you press nice and hard to get the, or not hard, just firm, to get the excess epoxy out. All right, so now we've got these pieces wetted out. And uh, I also put a little bit of epoxy on this piece of balsa just to aid in its sticking because we don't have very much room in here to, to uh, fit really 
anything except for like a tool or something inside to push the fabric down. So that'll help a little bit, maybe. I hope. Um, so I want this fiberglass to overlap a little bit. So I'm going to start by rolling it up into a little tube here. So hopefully help us get inside here. So now I'm just gonna kind of push this in there. Now the issue is the fiberglass likes to stick to itself, but it doesn't really like to stick to the side of the PVC here. So or maybe it does. side. Now this is usually kind of frustrating to get it to, to stick to the inside here. I'm just going to kind of Now, I've got this, uh, this, this like steel rod here that's gonna, I'm gonna kind of use it to press inside, but I've got to use some of this composites mold release stuff, basically PAM, I would guess. Um, just kind of aid in it not sticking, because it's already sticking to everything as it is, so. I'm just gonna kind of use that to press some of the wrinkles out and get it to fit a little bit better. Try and get it to stick as best you can to the inside of this because the balloon is not going to have direct contact with this layer of fiberglass. All right, so we've got this first layer inside here. Um, it didn't take just a few minutes. It took me about ten minutes to get this in here. So um, let me see if I can't kind of show what it looks like inside there. You notice hey, it's not really bubbling up anymore because the balloon is not going to directly contact this. You want it to be as good as you can get it. Now, sometimes that's not really very good, but and you just have to go with it. So, that's that. Now, I've got this piece of balsa. Now, the sketchy thing about this piece of balsa, being 64th inch, is that although it's flexible, it breaks really easy. Now, I guess I'm going to here. So, again, just like with the fiberglass, I'm going to roll it up, give it a little bit of overlap so it actually fits inside. I'm just going to go ahead and go for it. Now, you don't want to drag it along the fiberglass and undo your 20 minutes of work here. So, I just want to be careful. Now, this will stick out. But actually, let's do something different. We end up having to put this on. Anyway, let's go ahead and put this fiberglass on the balls before we put it in there. That might make our lives a little easier. We may find out here in a minute that that is not actually the case, but we'll give it a try. Alrighty. I'm be really pleased if this works out. So, obviously, naturally, there's gonna get wrinkles you're gonna introduce as you fold it like that which is okay, I can save this a little bit of time. All right, so now we've squeezed this in here. All right, so there it is sticking up both sides. Now, because we cut this to the right size earlier, we should be able to get this to fit just perfectly. Or maybe not. There we go. See, I already got a crack going there. That's that's not too big a deal, but we're gonna try and prevent that from spreading, if at all possible. Now, 
I've got a, just a big tongue depressor here that I'm gonna use to kind of press on that balsa to get it to fit on itself. Just so there's less of a seam. And it actually seems to be working all right, so. Just again, you don't want to be split the balsa. Because it just looks kind of unprofessional. Okay, and again, it's a little easier to work out the wrinkles on this because the balsa is a little bit more slippery, if you will. Um, so, you can see on the inside here, maybe a little bit, it's kind of hard to see, but got the balsa, fiberglass, and uh, now, the oh, balsa seems to be sticking up just a little bit, but that's not that really big. It's just a sample piece anyway. But uh, it is now ready to have the balloon inflated inside of it. All right, so I've kind of cleaned up a little bit here, get that epoxy out of the way. Now, the pump we have here is used for pumping up aircraft wheels usually. So <clears throat> what we're gonna have to do, since I don't have an actual balloon pump, we don't do this often enough to make it worth it. Um, got this wire wrapping stuff here. This is for like security wraps on say like well, pretty much all aircraft I guess to keep bolts from backing out and such. But it's not what we're using for this time. So our nozzle here is just this space, basically a hose at the end. It's got a little valve on it, but so what we're gonna do just put our balloon on here. Take this wire wrap. We're going to do two wraps. Let's make this thing airtight. I've got a little uh, tutorial video on how to do this too if anyone's really interested, but it's not really that important. Especially if you have something to inflate balloons better than what I've got here. Alright, so got this going on here. Tighten this up a bit. All right, seems to be airtight. Now, <laughs> the issue is this, since this is for pumping up little tiny you know, wheels, it uh, doesn't pump air in very fast, so I'm just gonna have to deal with it. So, I'm gonna kind of flip this back so it's about the blue. All right, so, I'm gonna put that in there. I'm just gonna get some pumps here. Maybe I'll stop the camera while I do this, this will take a while. Alright, so we have basically got it fully inflated here. This is the point at which you don't want to pop it, because then you just have to end up redoing it. So, you can see, well, I've still got a little bit more inflating I could do on this thing. But you can see, obviously, that it's coming out both ends here, which is exactly what we were going for. Um, now, I guess I forgot to mention it. I didn't do anything on the inside of this fiberglass to 
prevent it from sticking to the balloon. Because for one, the balloon is latex, so it really shouldn't stick to it anyway. And two, um, you don't really care too much about the inside. Um, but yeah, like I said, it really shouldn't stick to the inside. If it does, well, I guess you just have to take an exacto knife or something and peel it off. Um, so I don't think I'm going to inflate it any more than this because I honestly don't want to have to redo this to pop the balloon. Um, so this doesn't really have like a disconnect or anything, so I just have to leave the pump attached. It doesn't really leak air that much, but we kind of get this closer so I can show you. You can see if the camera focuses. You have to put it to manual focus. Maybe not. Oh come on, there we go. You can see that there is not really any gaps. So the balloon is pressing fully up against the side here, on both sides here. So that's exactly what we were going for. You can see, you can see there's like a few cracks and stuff from the balloon pressing out. It presses, presses pretty decently. So um, those aren't really important. That's why we have the excess one inch, so we can cut that extra off. Um, so we will leave all this stuff just sitting here, and hopefully nobody comes in and messes with it. And that will do it for this tutorial. There will, I'll make another one maybe a little later today, maybe when this epoxy is a little more cured and I can take this balloon out. Um, one that instead uses balsa, it uses a brosil, which is a lighter type of foam. Um, it basically does the same thing, it adds thickness, which adds stiffness to it. It doesn't really add any strength, the balsa does add strength. So it's kind of an experiment to see which, which one of these we want to use as a fuselage. But that's that. All right. So it's been about 24 hours since we laid this part up, which is eh, at the standard time we usually a lot for the epoxy to dry. And so I already popped the balloon and took the balloon out. It left a pretty nice smooth surface on the inside. So now we're just ready to remove it from the mold, which uh, for the purpose of this video I already kind of did because it took a little while to get it loose. We had to kind of, if you can see it, had to cut this a little bit to get it out. Um, Normally, if the piece was thicker, we would have just taken something and pushed push it out from the other end. But this piece being so thin and fragile, we just uh, opted to cut it open because we didn't really care to keep the mold anyway. So this ended up, once we relieve some of the pressure, it slides right out, which gives us a nice tube of fiberglass and balsa, which is, uh, it's definitely not very strong, but if this is what you're going for, it's really light, uh, only weighs a few grams. Um, so now with this excess on here, actually move the camera. So with the excess that we have, it's about an inch on either side. You can tell that the uh, fiberglass didn't fully cover the balsa, which we expected. And the same is true on the inside. You can see a little bit of balloon left in there. Um, so we're just gonna take a Dremel and go ahead and cut off the excess inch on either side so that we have our final five inch product. And uh, that'll do it for this piece.